Hi everyone and welcome to episode 10 of Novel Therapy. I'm Kate Fennessy, aspiring author and social media marketer. And I'm Helen Brown, New York Times bestseller. And we are here, we are here where it all began. We are here in Phillip Island today. It's a windy, wonderful day. The clouds are racing across the sky. There was a magnificent thunder and lightning storm about four in the morning. Yeah, I think. there was last night. It was very dramatic. I imagine here with the view of the bay that we have there. The bay, it is the bay. Um, it would be very dramatic place. Mm. I noticed a lot of the bins were falling over as I drove down. <laughs> and there was like roadwork signs that were all tipped over. I was like, something happened here. Wow. Yes. So um, we're at, at, at session 10. We are. And do you know, I took a look at your Medicare card. And it's <laughs> I've maxed out. So you have maxed out. I'll go see a case. It's true. You can only have 10, ten, sessions, ten sessions. Between now and <laughs> December. That's exactly right. But we are. We do think that this will be our... Our, this will be our end of season episode. Ten, season, ten episodes is, is a huge effort for anyone, especially newbies. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do today's episode and then we're going to take a break right up until the new year, realistically, because it's mid, yeah. it's early October. Yeah. Before we know like it, tradesmen say, "Oh no, we're all fully booked till Christmas. <laughs> Correct. Nothing's going to happen till February. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We'll reemerge, <laughs> new and better versions of something. ourselves." amazing exactly happens. if we need an impromptu session we'll have one but yeah we'll probably yeah. reconvene in the new year helen is off to new zealand next week on anyway, monday, on monday. Yeah. yeah i've had an absolute whirlwind of a week yeah um, you were at the book launch i was yes in Yarraville, in Yarraville. And it was very deeply moving yeah. um a wonderful speech from Sue Peden, who yeah. lost two children to a genetic disorder and two used to live across the road yeah. from us and i've admire her so deeply she's turned yeah. all that pain into just giving she gives so much to the community yeah she was really brave that was beautiful and then rob stepped forward and gave a speech a heart-stopping speech yeah. really um it to me it was the first time he's ever really owned his brother's death you know all these years later and um i think it's his hope and my hope that this book is actually going to help kids at a very deep level that Rob, yeah. Rob didn't have access to a book like Cleo and Rob when he lost his brother and even if it's just, just helping to mm. understand other children who are going through tough times you know yeah. it'd be a bit more compassionate. I think you made the point there about you wanted other kids to be kind to kids who are going through some yeah. sort of loss I thought that was yeah. that, that would be a beautiful outcome but I think Rob articulated it really well in his talk that it wasn't just something to help him the book would have helped a child but it also helps parents who are also he, he described it as the double whammy of going through their own grief mm. but also not having tools to help their mm. kids mm. um because you're so right grief managing your own grief as an adult or wh wherever you are in your life is hard enough let alone helping and steering it be yeah. for someone else like children and the, i believe quite deeply the key to that is communication we just need to talk about it more normalize it more yeah. you know and that's what the casket is who i'll be seeing on wednesday night <laughs> at dorothy butler's and bob's me that that's what they're so good at oh. husband and wife marry funeral directors yeah. they are so compassionate and and they give a new language to death you're right mm. as soon as you talk about them they've got a they've got a language they've got a narrative they've mm. got a storytelling gift that guides people through yeah. and you see the beauty in grief because mm. when people are, when tears are just pouring down someone's face it's pure love it's yeah. pure pure love there is it's not just a scary horrible thing we want to blot out yes that's very very true and it's mm. a celebration of life and i know that's a cliche but it, you know when you can actually connect on that level it's so important to acknowledge how important someone was to you mm. and yeah. And in many ways, these 10 episodes have been a homage to your mum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about it driving down here. Um, often Helen and I will decide a theme that broadly um, before we start. And I just, yeah, I thought really strongly about mum. And just on that, that early on this, um, I think it was episode three when we met Tara, I was kind of, for one, I was really steering clear of 
wanting to talk about and own my, my story with Were mum. you ever? Yeah, I was. I was backpedaling the hell out of there. I remember saying to Tara, I'm not writing about my mum. No, 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 no. I'm not going to be one of those people. Yeah, I didn't yeah. want to be owned by her death. I didn't want her death to be my to story. To who you are. You yeah. know, in this short, relatively short time, not only do I not think that way anymore, for one, mum is not, mum's death is not mum's story either. My mum is much more than her death. And on the way here, I was thinking about my mum and, and, and in the same way, I, my life is not defined by that one moment. I'm not the girl whose mum committed suicide. I'm so many different things. Yes, I've had loss. Yes, mum's death will always be a tragedy. But do you know what? I am so grateful for the mum that I had. I may have only had her for 21 years. I may wish she was still here, yes. But my mum was you know, we were talking about um, things before this, like about my daughter. My mum was an empathetic. She cared about other people. She was funny. She was quirky. She was gentle. She was generous. She had a unique spirit that drew people in, which was why at her funeral it was packed. And even though it was bloody difficult, that funeral, and I have all these feelings I'm still working through, yeah, mum, mum was a very special woman and I realised driving here, I'm so lucky that I had my mum. So therefore her death um, is not, yeah, I, it's not going to be a cloud that darkens That's me. That's wonderful. Mm. You know? And it adds to who you are as a person and gives you so much more to be able to give others now. Yeah. You know, now that you're along the path of resolving that yep. instead of just carrying it as a wound. Yep, and we've all got our wounds and I may have had, that was, it felt a bit like being king hit by life. It really did. Of course did, it did. Because it hits you with such is. force yeah. and such surprise. And it should happen to nobody. And it feels violent in that it sense of, violent. yeah, it's like a violent shock to your life. Mm. And, you know, Rob articulated it the same when you're a young kid, I was a lot older, but it, you don't expect life to do things like that to mm. you. I, I remember that shock of like, life hurt me. And you yep. can decide that you don't like and trust life anymore. You don't like and trust people or love. So that's not the path I'm on anymore. Yay. Because it's, it's such huge. a miracle that we're here at all, exactly. isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. And I'm so lucky and I have all these things to be grateful for, including my beautiful daughter and, you yeah. know, all these opportunities and I'm writing my story. It doesn't matter the outcome. I'm, I'm going to make the most of things. And, yeah. you know, mum's loss will always be with me. Do you know if you're lying asleep, try, lying in bed at night, trying to get to sleep, as I often do, because my mind works over time, <laughs> um, I will calm my breathing down and listen to my heart. And you know, the rhythm of your heart says, thank you, thank mm. you, thank you. And if you can live every moment like that, I think the world just opens up to you. And that's where we were talking about coincidence. Yes, we were. We've um, had so many <laughs> since we started. We have. I mean, well, I'll just tell you a very short sure. one yeah. that happened yesterday. I was meeting my dear island friend, Heather, and her hair was down below her shoulders. She said, I made a vow when my son and his family moved to New Zealand that I was not going to cut my hair till they come back. Well, they're obviously never going to come back. They've been gone three years. So tomorrow I'm getting my hair cut. And I got a text from her this morning. I got my hair cut and my son just text, texted me and said they're coming home in two years. <laughs> oh, wow, that's great. <laughs> I love it. She bought it out. Yes, so it's all in their hair, mm. like Samson and Delilah. Yeah. <laughs> but the good. greatest coincidence mm. is how we met. I know. And it the is. Is around it's the subject. so true. That just gave me funny <laughs> hot chills if there's such a thing. <laughs> it's so true. I forgot. Yeah, we have to dive in. So today. You can't just feel all anger about this person. No, now. no, mm. that's true. <laughs> so the theme we came up with today is uh, coincidences, gratitude, and forgiveness. Because really, those threads have been there from the outset in a lot of the stuff we've talked about. <laughs> Yeah, we have a few bangers when it comes to coincidences, but the very <laughs> fact that we're here is to do with my cheating ex. Yes. You know, or just I could call him my ex. Yeah, he's just also call cheated. Him your ex. <laughs> and look, he was a very good masseur. And one day I was having a massage because my regular masseuse was not available. And yes. he asked what I did, and I said I was a writer, and I found it very hard keeping up with the social media thing that was becoming so popular now. So, but that's interesting. Because that's the area that my wife works in. He said, I'll give you her number afterwards, if you like. And that was Kate. 
It's so funny. It was at the very start of my, when I branched out to start doing paper boats. So I was, I was working in advertising, wanting my escape route. Helen was the first time I'd ever had a, a real client that I procured by myself. So he'd set it up and we, I came to the cafe across the road from your place. And I remember we had our first chat and it was nerve wracking for me. Oh really? Yeah, of course, oh. because it was new. Like I was doing that for my work, but not oh. doing it as me. And you were so smart and clever oh, and I, switched on. But I was also, but the fact that I loved writing and you were a writer, I really took tucked that away because I didn't want to be all like, I love writing too, but I just wanted to see if I could help. <laughs> and we had this kind of agreement, let's oh, try this. And we, um did some things back then and we sort of you had such grew your page and yeah, brilliant yeah. Ideas. oh I loved it I loved it you were always my sort of um favorite client because it felt like an indulgence to work oh, with you so oh how do I tell yeah Kate, I how do I get Kate to tell me how to turn off my computer <laughs> is that control we troubleshooted delete. things and we did things like getting her newsletters happening and yes. again or were they happening and, at all yeah no I you know. got those oh, started they were great. and I think yeah. they go to about 800 people yeah and the newsletters have been fabulous and just the little touches all the time I'd help yeah if you ever got stuck in digital oh, yes cyberspace. I was always stuck in cyberspace <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. So we met through my ex, which is really so. There's quite something to a thank him for. Yeah. And look, again, on the drive down, I was thinking about these themes of forgiveness. I think that, you know, when Mum first died, it was Mum that I was angry at, and I did not. It took me a while to forgive her. You know yeah. how I began to forgive her through having Emmy. Mm -hmm. It was the nights breastfeeding in the middle of the night with Emmy's little gorgeous head, and you're watching them nuzzling away and getting life through your body, and I started to feel warmth towards mum again mm -hmm. and remembering that mum was my loving mother um, and not just and the person who broke was my it heart. a daughter that you had? Yeah. You know, I mean, some would say almost that was ordered for you. I felt, it felt easier to connect. Yeah, yeah definitely. So mm -hmm. I started to forgive mum through Emmy and I don't think I ever had to forgive dad in some senses. I think suicide can do that. It can throw doubt and shame all over the place, but... I had to forgive mum and then I had to sort of forgive myself. That's the key to you know, I and found that. With, yeah, you do with guilt and grief. Yeah. Because yeah. you? you think if only the timing was different, if only, if only. Mm -hmm. if was only... I a shitty teenager? Did I add to her problems? Should I have done this? When when I last spoke to her, should I have said this? Yeah. You know, all that yeah. stuff. So when it came to being hurt and betrayed and cheated on, I think forgiving my ex was actually even harder in some ways because it felt like this deliberate action like you made a choice to betray me but driving down here I was kind of thinking you know broken people do shitty things that hurt yeah, other people that's you know? true and I don't even know to be very honest the truth of of what made up those decisions that led to that you know I think Tara said something really interesting mm. on that podcast was that often when you've had something really bad happen to you mm. you'll make a very another very bad choice so that you're still stuck in your pain mm -hmm. subconsciously mm -hmm. and who knows what went on but I just kind of now realize like I don't know the extent of that brokenness and I think in my heart I, I think you know the man you met and the man I thought was who he was there was love there like there was a desire to create the family we mm. created that was real mm. it's just that other things were happening and I don't reckon my gut feeling is he probably didn't want to do what he did I don't think anyone wants to be an asshole no. I don't think anyone wants to cause chaos in their life mm. my sense is maybe his life has gone from one yeah. Implosion to the next. Sort yeah. of thing. Based yeah. on addictions and compulsions. Yeah. But you, do you know what? You don't need to spend too much time thinking about him. No, and I because don't. Because you are a fabulous woman, a successful businesswoman, a great mum, beautiful woman. Mm. That's where your focus is now, yeah. I'd like to think. Absolutely. Mm. But I think it's a good thing for me to work through yep. forgiving and letting yep. go. Going into those And realising when life does king hit you like that, it's not actually personal to you. Like, it can happen to anyone. You're not yeah, being hunted. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're, no. not, you're not being hunted by bad luck or... Because if you start looking at life that way, you'll think the next disaster's around the corner. Yeah, it's easy to get in that mindset. Yeah, and I'm not, I don't want to be in that mindset. So no. I'm, not, I'm not... And again, I had to forgive myself for that relationship and realise that that's where I was at at 30. I was yep. really keen to have a second baby. I thought he fixed fitted all mm. the boxes. I'm a very different woman now, 10 years later, nearly 11 years later. I am whole. I don't want to be, I'm not, I'm just not in the same place. So mm. it's not going to happen again in that sense because I'm just not the same 
person. But no, I, yeah, I, I think I'm won't. closer than ever to being able to forgive my ex. But yeah, he brought us together. So, so there's two wonderful coincidences we've yes. talked about. And there was yeah. one other one, which I think you have to explain <laughs> because it's <your laughs> one. It's a really <laughs> freaky one. Okay, so in the interest of privacy, we will just be creative here. But I'm just going to say that, so as a single woman, I've been single for now, what, three, probably four years. I've been dating, and we talked about dating a little bit with Kate a few episodes ago. It's Kate, the Pilates Kate, teacher. Kate, the Pilates teacher, yeah. who's a lovely woman, yeah. um, who's also in that same category. She's single and dating. <laughs> We've both had experience <laughs> dating online and things like that. And you meet all sorts of people online. And I met someone... Let's call them, um, have we come up with a good name? I think, I think it's a strong name. Let's call them, how about Marco? Okay, Marco. Let's go with that. Yeah. So I met Marco online. Mm. Um, and it's an unusual name. It was. Mm. Yes. And it sounded quite <laughs> compelling the way you spoke about him. I thought, oh yeah. But it I captured could tell me. It the captured way me. you t spoke about him, I also sensed he wasn't that great for you yeah. I felt he was most, playing you. most people in my world were giving me the same feedback yeah but I got quite caught up in this I know one you did. I did I, I got know. quite caught up and I was being you liked saying his name Marco yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes, but did. then oddly enough at my Pilates lessons other Kate, I was being strung along she spoke about her online dating experiences and mentioned someone called Marco. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. I said, what sort of field is he in? And he, Similar field. Yeah. Same field. Same field. And look, I didn't take it any further. But I just... <laughs> you pocketed that little piece of information. When you combine the rare name with the rare the rare field. Yeah. Or the not common. Not common name, yeah. not common And work. the kind of flamboyant personality that both of you were describing. <laughs> And we both obviously found it attractive, although your Kate is a bit more sensible than me, obviously, because <laughs> I had a quite protracted, ongoing, up and down thing with this guy, off and on. Anyway. It was a big aha moment, wasn't Oh, it? my Lord. So after we recorded our podcast. What was that, episode six or something? <laughs> yeah, six or seven. Helen just casually sort of said to the other Kate, so you were dating and didn't you date a Marco? <laughs> it's like, I'm like, guts, my insides oh, just dropped. Oh, I know, I really no, was, felt few. No, but it was a good, I needed that to happen. I just, it was a shock because Kate and I were quite, are quite similar in, in my assessment. Like we're both independent business owner, women. And far too intelligent to be dicked around <laughs> by a Marco. <laughs> but it was just crazy. It was just, it was quite... Oh. It was... So it was good. It was good. We exchanged so what, a few... tell me what you did. I thought that was fun. Well, I couldn't resist. I was pretty... I had the emotions like rose in me because I was like, <laughs> what? And like, uh, I made, we had a photo. We always take a photo of each episode. So I had the photo of me, Helen and Kate. So I just sent it to Marco and said, funny who you meet. I was like, look who I met today. And I was straight away like the cover was blown. He just, just straight away said, how did you make the connection? I was like... Oddly enough, it was Helen. <laughs> so poor Marco got nobbled by an old granny. Yeah, it's sort of classic because he's so super cool. He's a hipster and he would have hated it. And also we exchanged, There was I just let out the briefest of, you know, information which would have absolutely rocketed him. You know, just in terms of what Kate had said, I just kind of casually sort of said, here's the picture that was painted please don't contact me again. Good on you. So Marco has been moved off. And I have to say another, related to my dating life, another set of More coincidences. Sensible. Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah, because yeah. you know how last week with um, <laughs> the gorgeous Phoebe, we did, I think we shared it in the group, Phoebe illustrated a window at Jeffrey's Bookstore in Melbourne. Yes. And she did all these cute cats kind of vying for attention through <laughs> jungle leaves. And there was a big show-off cat, a lion, bah, like this. And I was like, I like that one. Yes. And Helen said, you need to learn to like these ones. <laughs> the implication was there was a Marco lion and there yeah. was all the rest of the more cats. More normal one, yeah. More so reliable. I have to tell this story too because this is a crazy coincidence. So last year I met a more reliable cat, let's call it. Leo, okay? So Leo and Marco are very different. And um, I briefly um, dated Leo, and but I was too I was too caught up Sweet in Marco. Yes, I know. I was just really, I mm. really was. Um, so I didn't give him a go. And then it's like the universe just literally redirected me back because I went to Sydney earlier this year, which I don't often do. Like I don't go to the airport very often generally. 
And who did I see? I just turned around, I'm having a beer with Emmy, um, you know, like, oh, we're going to Sydney, look up and there's Leo. I was like, oh my God. So I went over and said hi. And it was a bit awkward because I'd kind of essentially, you know, I'd, sidelined them. Yes. It was a tiny bit awkward. He was very cool and respectful. And afterwards we sort of messaged each other, like, lovely to see you. And I thought, uh, I just leave it at that. You know, I leave it at that. I left it at that. Then only a few months ago, I went and had lunch with my old boss and I did the, I was actually texting Marco. I was literally about to text him mm. to say how the lunch went, not that he would have cared. Mm. And I look up, Leo, mm. just right there. And mm. not only that, but it turns like out, movie. well, it's ridiculous mm. because if you go backwards and think if I had have just had one more bite to eat with my boss or if I had mm. have said, sure, I'll come upstairs, I wouldn't mm. have seen him. Mm. But I did. And not only that, but I just, I was texting Marco and I didn't finish the text. Wow. So this is before. Yeah. Yeah. The great I, reveal. Correct. <laughs> um, so Leo kind of calmly and just normally sort of said, look, if you're up for it, let's have a drink oh, again. Oh, that's nice. And we've since had that's a couple lovely. of catch ups and he is a lovely pussycat. He's oh. not the. <laughs> Good. And look, seeing this as our uh, episode 10 and we're doing a bit of a kind of round up, I think it'd be lovely to say what Tara decided to do as yes. a result of our podcast it's with so her. It's so exciting because Tara, as, as uh, if you would have, if you listened, you would have heard, has this remarkable, beautiful, strong story in her life. And she, um, after talking to us about, about her story, ha has hopefully got a bit of inspiration and has decided to really follow it through and she's mm. going to have a podcast. Well, she's gone off to oh, Bali she's, yeah, she's for been a month there. That's and right. she's telling her story, yep. interviewing her family Finding out what really happened behind yeah, that stoning. Yeah, she's exploring it. Because when she was, her earliest mm. childhood memory is of a ritual stoning of someone in her village. And yeah. she's going to go back and revisit that place, talk to people, find out. I think it will be most oh, riveting. Uh, it, it could end up being a book or a film. I have no Easily. doubt about it because mm. it's so powerful. And yeah, I've been watching her stories. I follow her on Instagram and she's been in Bali and it's just like... but. There's something so cool. She's got such a, a great persona when she posts. She really owns her herself. And I think... She does a life too. Oh, she's mm, fabulous. So mm. not only did she own her story and was brave enough to tell it that day with us, but now she's going, she's she, diving in. Yes. She's going to live it. She's yes. going to explore it. And on top of that, she has now got a serious job in a law firm. So oh, she okay. only had this month to do it, which is actually uh, works very well. You know, brilliant. she's got a deadline. She's got to do it. So, so we will post the link. Um, what we'll do, uh, even though we'll be having our hiatus, we will keep you posted <laughs> with things like that because we won't be able to help ourselves. <laughs> there are 104 of you now in our group. So please stay connected. Oh, it keeps growing. Yeah, it keeps growing, it's which wonderful. is wonderful. And our Italian branch, yeah. Edie Tassi. We have she, plans, yeah. people. They include Italy. <laughs> well, I don't know if you you may not have heard one of the episodes anyway. My Italian translator, Edie Tassi, she's just finished translating Bono and she's done all my cat mm. books into Italian mm. and she's so fastidious and careful and yeah oh, you've always spoken very highly of her, and we've yeah. met once and she's just a gorgeous woman and she is teaching writing in northern Italy um, to, to help women in particular heal through writing and she asked to use the name novel therapy yeah so Are technically we... we've gone international we've gone global yes. <laughs> no but I think Helen and I are very much um so much has come out of this. I, I think the rough plan, at least from my point of view, and I think Helen's had so much on you, you need a break anyway, but my plan is to really, break. yeah, is to really hammer out and work on my manuscript. So I'm hoping that when we reconvene in a podcast sense, I'll have some great updates for you about the progress of my actual writing. And look, I'm very intrigued by your other idea and it'll be interesting mm. to hear um, your feedback as listeners mm. as yeah, we should what let you, you know. think about Yeah, this. so one other thing, this is where work and life is constantly intersecting as it does. So in my work life, I'm a social media marketer, I have clients, and etc. But it, it's fantastic and there's freedom, but I'm still tied to a service job so it's hard and it, it doesn't free me up as much as I'd like with writing so one thing I'd been I've been exploring is online courses e-courses which means you pre-record a series of videos generally and people can enroll and, and go through it at their own pace it's online learning and I think it's a massive boom area um, <laughs> well it is and so I'm exploring that for my own purposes I, I would like to change the way I work from a person doing marketing to a person teaching others to do marketing. That's that's something I've wanted to do you're for ages. You're natural at that. Well, I really enjoy mm, it. I love to support it. other people and I know the work's there. Mm. 
Um, so that's a personal thing, but it sort of planted in my head this idea. I thought, I wonder if Helen and I could do a online course similar to what we've already gone through in this first season of helping people to perhaps either uncover their own story, heal through creative projects, and or maybe it is the process. Maybe it is as literal as a novel. We're not sure exactly which space we'd go. So we'd love to hear your feedback. If we could create some sort of course to help guide you through that kind of process, what, what would you be interested in? Because I know myself, having had access to Helen, I can say this with 100% honesty, there is no way I would have got to how I'm feeling about my project with it. I know it's true. There is just no way. And, and I was trying to think of how I can explain it. Helen not only teaches how to write, she's a very, you know, she's a very experienced craftsperson when it comes to words and writing. And I always love that. But you've taught me how to live as a writer and, and actually taught me how to approach life as a writer. And that's been transformative on a different level that I can't even explain. It's actually made, I'm not kidding, my relationships with my family, there's something's changed. I'm talking more about my mum's death. I'm appreciating my father more. Um, I'm communicating more honestly to Emmy. There's been all these absolutely unexpected byproducts of this process that how on earth could I have thought that's what we'd get out of it when we sat here 12 weeks ago or whenever it was, no way. Mm -hmm. So whatever I produce is gonna be so much better than what I would have done by myself because I was thinking like this. That's right. Now it's come out. Yeah. Now I'm thinking like yeah. this. I, I realise the power. You're in a much better place now to really embark on that book. Yeah. And just those little tools that I've been given. The writer's box, my little pink notebook, which is in my bag. The fact that I've gone back and, and rejigged my weekly schedule to make more time for my writing. All of those things have come directly from this process and being exposed to going deeper, you've taught me to go deeper. And even just the first draft that I'm still at that about 10,000 mark, I've already absolutely given depth to my main character. I've made, I've transformed my husband from a one dimensional villain to a nice person. Well, a seemingly nice well, person. A person with complexities, <laughs> a, a complex person who's about to do a really dumb thing. Um, yeah, so I can't even, that's my testimonial. I, I just couldn't have even predicted how much I've got from this process. Well, it's been wonderful for me too. And I'm just in awe of your courage and, and the way that you've kept coming back. <laughs> <laughs> kept coming back for more. It's oh. been really but we, a revelation and yeah, a revolution. It has for both of us because we didn't yeah. know what to expect. And we obviously connect and we met in that incredible coincidental way. But, you know... We didn't know what was going to happen no, from this, did I we? I think this thing of trust, if you mm -hmm. are willing to yep. surrender to what's happening and trust that it might be leading you in a helpful direction, well, then it's why fight it? Yeah. And I just, mean, there are times in life when you shouldn't be too trusting. Yeah, yeah. But that doesn't mean there are times when you really should just go mm. with the flow and see what comes out the other end. And you've been talking about that lately, about being open to things, yep. you know, and I think just to a few little teasers for next year, I think what we both see on the horizon is, you know, the place of my mum's death. Um, oh, yeah. I think that's something that we're going to... Really? You're up for that now? Yep. Great. Yep. And I not only want to come to, to face up and come to terms with the physicality of my mum's death, there's her grave, which gets yeah. largely unvisited by a lot of us because I think her death just it was so tricky and I don't want that to be the oh. case anymore. And even just uh, my gorgeous cousin Emma kind of messaged me when we talked about dad's headstone um, in whatever the inscription, you know, and I've been talking about it with my sister. We're mm. having these conversations. I'm ready to talk to, it, to dad about it. And I'm so excited. It sounds like the wrong word, but I am feeling really positive about mum's 20th anniversary mm. of her passing next year. I've been putting the word out there to relatives, cousins of my mum, brother, siblings of my mum, guess what everyone's saying? I'm in. Fantastic. Everyone wants to Fantastic. plan it. Everyone wants to, I keep saying, <laughs> I've got no firm ideas, I just want us to all contribute. People are already kind of saying they want to speak about her, they want photo board, with food, we're all talking about food, photos and stories. I hope some carrot cake will be in there. Carrot cake will definitely. I need to find that original recipe. Yeah. I've got to talk to Dad because she had this really yeah, complex recipe. It was like 20 steps, but it was brilliant. So, yeah, that, that and also just another little teaser. We've 
we may be appearing in a live version next year of our podcast. So, oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, the Peninsula, yeah, the Peninsula Writers Club, who I'm part of, have mentioned, and I hope you don't mind me saying this, Andrew, but we might be doing some sort of a live event with them next year as our podcast. So yep. I can drive that far. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> she was worried it would be too far. I was like, no, Helen, she can do it. She can do it. Because I have to say, you've driven an hour and a half every time. Or is it, how long does it take you to get... To your house? Yeah. No, not an hour and a half. It, well, an hour and a half both. Yeah, it's 45 minutes out of peak hour. Yeah, nice. but I love it. That's the Frankston tax, though. If you're going to go move out of the city, you've got to drive sometimes. I'm okay with that. Oh, well, that's good. Oh, it's been just wonderful. It's been so wonderful. So just to sum up all that, what we're trying to say is we want to explore, we together are going to explore some kind of online course. So definitely give us your feedback because we have loved, and it's meant a lot to us, to see what other people are getting out of mm, what mm, we've like been doing. Cindy, I mean, your responses, yes. they're just magnificent. You're like our yeah. top student, Cindy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you always she's do your homework. In You're inspiring me. You're inspiring me. <laughs> oh, if Cindy's coming, she's going to have to be a guest. Oh, so gosh, that's, yeah, we need lock a it in. Maybe an accent. Correct. <laughs> But, you know, just little messages I've been getting, um, like Pip, a girl I used to work with, talking about how she's finding it inspiring and just all sorts of people because I forgot that I shared it on LinkedIn once so I had all these other oh, people no. accessing oh, the corporates. Yeah, and the corporates <laughs> are coming out of the shell, the, the lanyard brigade that oh. I talked about. So look, we have enjoyed it so much mm. and we want you to keep following what we do. But yeah, we're going to... Um, and I would like to, to thank your beautiful niece for yes. providing the first review of Cleo and Rob, which you sent to me oh, it was gorgeous so Isla stunning. my niece is very articulate she's quite a passionate kid she's like you she's a she's a little she's same, a little firecracker yeah, she's, she's a gorgeous she even thing she looks like you oh, we, she I, came to the book launch she came to wearing the book launch lipstick. I think she was a bit confused about um what that all meant like a book yeah. and I was trying to explain to her that Phoebe did the pictures and Helen oh, wrote the words I told her yeah. that when she was about to meet you I don't know she's four she's five, five. but I don't know if you realize but she was very excited to be in a queue waiting to meet you. Like, that was a lot for her. She kept commenting, we're getting closer. We're next, we're next. Like, she, she just knew enough to know that somehow this is exciting because I'm in a queue. And then when I got her home that night, we all stayed at my auntie's. I, I read to her generally anyway when she stayed with me. I said, we're now reading the book. And we read it. The cool thing was with Isla, just to connect with Milo's death, my, Milo, my beloved fluffy grey cat, mm. Isla was probably Milo's biggest fan in some way. She called him Mr. Fatty, Mr. Fluffy. What's Milo doing? She'd always say to me, where's Milo and what's he doing? And always feeding him. So when he died, I was like, oh God, how do I tell Isla this? Because Isla's going to be like so shook, you know, mm -hmm. um, by this whole thing. And we, we kind of told her, but I, I know for a fact, reading her, your book, she was very emotionally engaged and... Um, she was a bit shocked, I think, that mm. there was something sad happened in a book. So she wanted to, straight away, she said that in her little review I videoed for Helen. She said, she frowned and she said, Sam got hit by a car mm. and that was in the story, she said. But she then kind of cottoned onto the connection between the cat and things getting better at the end. And then I spoke to her about Milo and I said, can you tell me a bit about Milo um, dying and what that was like? And she, her main thing she said was Milo passed away and it was very sad. And she said, because he was special and we're going to get his ashes and put them in a plant. And I just watched a transformation because your book gave her the language to say it. Isn't and I great? showed her mum, my sister, mm -hmm. Jane. Jane said she's never used that phrase pass away before. So it gave her language mm -hmm. and it gave her that sense of a uh, progression from this sad event to a future hope. Mm -hmm. um, so that's another little event that will be on my to-do list is getting the plant. I do it with Isla and Emmy, my daughter, and we're going to get this plant. I've just got to think where to put it and what it is. But, oh, yeah, so that review was exciting, It was. It? it was my first children's review because, yeah, because yeah, I've never – well, I used to write um, current affairs for school children many, many years ago for radio. Really? Yeah, so that's I know so that cool. they are – very tough audience and yeah. you must never condescend them. No. And they'll get bored like that. And and a lot and of that... books do. And I'm, I'm being honest, I've read a lot of books to Isla. We always read a couple at least when she comes over. She's not really that engaged. No. She was very, she was quite on the edge of her seat. She was quite, I could see in her body language reading it, she was very engaged. Oh, that's great to hear. They're yeah. a very discerning audience. They and are. here on the Iron My Dear Friend, 
Ian Turnage, the vicar. Yes, uh, the vicar. He's been reading so it aloud. Grand. I've gone to the um, school the last two mornings and he's read it aloud. And I've been sitting there absolutely on tender hooks thinking these kids, you know, they might get bored or it might be too strong. Mm. But they, they took it at such a deep... Did they? There's such a maturity, mm. an emotional well, maturity. Well, because I think they can sense the truth in it and the honesty and they're not being... It's not condescending. A lot of kids' books are boring. Mm. The plot just goes... Blah, 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 blah. Like... I don't know. Bright kids are going to respond. All kids. I, I just think it's really brave. And mm. just being there in that Yarraville bookstore, yeah, it was a pretty powerful moment. Made me realise that this is a very special book and a special, you know, yeah. It just makes me excited for what you're going to do in the next next year, Helen. Honestly, it makes me excited mm. for what's next. Well, I've got no idea. Well, that's, 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 that's yeah. luscious. I love yeah, that. just luscious. <laughs> I've got no idea. That's why I'm excited. What about open one of those food caravans? How about that? Love it. Paper <laughs> hat, you know. <laughs> Brian <somebody> hates cooking. That <laughs> <laughs> could be fantastic. Oh, Lord. That's funny. Now, you're going to do your social bit now. Just a quick one because I think this is my last one. And Not your last one. No, well, my last Sounds... one for this season. Yeah. For this season. But this actually... I think this is cool because I think I'm going to use this in my book. So let me explain. So Ooh. the update from the world of social, this was only last week, is that on Instagram, right? So for those of you who use Instagram, you'll know that the heart, the little heart symbol is what you click to see who liked your post generally, who commented. It's a notifications bit. Yeah, and you can add, yeah, it says yeah. a little number. Yeah, yeah, but on the bottom, if you look through the list, so when you click on the heart, it will just go, it'll list anyone yeah. who's interacted with, yeah. you know, so-and-so liked your post, so-and-so commented, so there you go. But up until very recently, there were two columns in this, this part, this tab, and actually what you could do, I bet you've never done it because you're not a stalker, is what you could actually look at, you could click on following and you could see the activity of all the people you follow. So when you clicked on that column, what you would see, for example, is Kate Fennessy liked this post. You know, Marco liked that post, mm -hmm. for example. Um, so what you could do if you were really um, interested in what someone else was up to, you could see what they liked and commented. So it was called the stalker, it was known as the stalking feature. Mm. So for example, if you break up with someone, <gasps> You could just quite often during the day have a little look at this following tab and you could see what they were liking. Yeah. For example, you could see if a Marco type was liking bikini clad women, yeah. right? Yeah. So it was known as the stalking feature. So the news is it's now been removed. But what I found interesting about it is that because basically Instagram has said it was not really adding value and I think they probably knew it had this stalking feature. It was very handy for online dating though because you could really suss out what someone was up to online. Um, and I'm thinking I'll weave it into my book because I actually didn't know about that feature years ago. What it means is you could see the activity of someone. So I'm going to I'm gonna add it into my book where at one point Marae is going to figure out that she can see what her husband's liking online and he doesn't know it. Because in real life, and this is that perhaps we could end with our last coincidence story, in real life, Technology is what undid my ex. Yes. It, yeah. was, it was not understanding how his online world was... Seriously, that's how he got undone. Yeah. He got undone yeah. by a, a username he chose, which was stupid because it was linked to a football club that he liked. <laughs> and that username, <laughs> that username well, he have... was his undoing. Well, maybe subconsciously he wanted to be undone well, because I would, there's no way I'd try and cheat on you that, through the internet. I tell you what, it'd be like a Collingwood fan calling themselves Peter Dacos. Like, come on, it's stupid. And he, yeah. It, exactly. You've got to be careful if you're going to cheat online yeah. and he wasn't careful. So mm. because that was his undoing in real life, I like this idea of Murray at one point discovering his true identity. Because if you see what someone likes... Did you meet the other Murray at the book launch, the girl with the bright yellow hair? No, I oh, saw her. That's, Is that that's Murray? Right. That's a coincidence she's... too, because that's the name I chose for my character. <laughs> she's the most wonderful girl. She's a friend of my daughter, oh, Kat's. Yeah, yeah I saw yeah, Kat there. Okay. introduced you next time I will. Look, it was standing room only at this event. It was very busy. It was, it was packed. Well, so. next week, New Zealand. I'm really looking forward to the, that. I'm on the road big time. Yeah. Auckland. Um, I've, oh, what have I got? Um... Dorothy Butler's on Wednesday night. I've got Poppy's Howick on Thursday night. I've got the Seroptimus Lunch yes. in Plymouth on the Friday. Still love that name, Seroptimus. Yeah, it's gorgeous. And they're sold out. Oh, that's um, going to be 
Yeah, yeah, both of them made to and also um, in Wellington, Marsden books, and oh. already all the people I love over there. You're are gonna, I, I really predict you're going to have a ball because oh, it's always just so. nice to get out of you. And there's something, surely it's a spiritual homecoming too with the story, and it's New Zealand. It doesn't feel like that. Yeah, sometimes I have to fight to hold it together, you know, because people share really emotional stories with me, and that, and they come out of the blue, mm -hmm. and I want to listen very deeply, and I hold those stories with me you're good at that helen you're uh, really natural at that you respect those moments but yeah i think it's after, hard in a, in a really busy shop or yeah. to hold that you know and, and when you don't have half an hour to listen to someone who deserves three hours you know it's it can be quite i just thought of something uh, usually you it's the clinic and you give me the homework i want to give you some homework please after your tour i would like to prescribe you with some sort of trip to like Fiji or something, you should go on holiday. <laughs> I really think that just to absorb it all. Yeah. And because you're, you're saying you're facing that time of um, not knowing what's next, mm. this is my mm. prognosis for you. Thank a holiday, you. honestly. Thank a, a, a holiday where there's nothing on the agenda. That would be just lovely. Yeah. So there you go, see, the students yeah. become the teacher. Uh, the master, <laughs> you're the master. <laughs> no, but I think, um, it, it, it's been, yeah, and just to witness that and to take that video, for those who didn't see, on Helen's Facebook page, there's the video of, of Rob and your neighbour Sue and Helen talking, and it was a big moment. I, I think, I'm, I'm not surprised at all that you're, you know, that it's been probably quite a lot and quite exhausting, And I, but I really think New Zealand's going to be oh, they special. Will. Yeah, it always is. Yeah, so you'll get like a hug from your homeland. I do. When I yeah, go back. I can and tell the be... last few times you've been, you, I always see from your posts this lovely energy, yeah. this rejuvenating yeah. energy. So and I bet that will happen. Again. I'll do it again. And then a holiday. So, Philip, if you're listening, Helen needs a holiday. <laughs> so, not to start Iceland. research. I don't no, I'm thinking cold. Fiji, somewhere like that, tropical, maybe, I don't know, isn't maybe Bali. The, yeah, but isn't it the cyclone season? Somewhere nice. Anyway. Somewhere without cyclones. Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere just flop and drop, you know, just somewhere with no brain power required. That sounds very desirable. Could you go no, there? No, no, wouldn't I get kidnapped by drug, <laughs> drug lords? And then I'd have to write a book about it. <laughs> oh. No, just someone in my feeds recently gone to Mexico and they show that, you know, when they do a walkthrough, like she's done the walkthrough, like here's our con, and I was like, oh. Um, that's what, well, I'm going to have to leave that to you and Philip to work it okay. out, but you need a whole And what about you? What's your homework over? the next few yep. months my You're homework do some more work is my book. writing yeah Good. i really want to i'm trying Good. to say no to other things i've gotten better yeah, at that well i haven't really noticed that you went and did you've been signing up for things I, what have i signed oh, up I don't for know. i thought you'd gone off on something i thought oh she's i went to a, i'm going to a writer's event this weekend oh that's all yeah right. but that's, that's okay right. yeah um what have i signed up for oh, i hope i, I haven't remember. signed up oh, for it wasn't the greens no i've no. pulled back from the greens no, i'm right. still involved but i'm i'm no i've pulled back from my my book club the Good. greens yeah you have to focus no on i've it. got to focus on it so yeah. my main thing is the manuscript i want yeah. to really i want okay. to be able to present something i'm proud of Great. when we that reconvene. surprise me yeah good okay there was a funny program and i only watched the first episode i think mm. it was called rookie and it was about a, a middle-aged cop who just started being a cop and was having a terrible time and everyone was being very prejudiced against him okay and he went off to his first job it was a domestic violence situation a huge black guy and a little blonde wife and of course, you know, we all knew the blonde wife had been bashed up. And he took the big husband outside and said, you know, you've got to sort this out. And he okay. said, well, she's got anger issues, you know, sir. Mm. And then they're called back two hours later. Mm. She has murdered him. Oh, nice throat. twist. See? Twist. All right, twist. Can okay. you twist, please? Okay, I will do twist that. Twist your way through the summer. Yeah, that, I like that a lot. That's good diagnosis. That's got me. You've already good. captivated me. So yeah, I'm going to work on my thing and I'm also going to slowly try and transform. I'm going to work on this e-course space too because the real point of that is to give me more yes. headspace for my writing. Fabulous. So that's kind of on the agenda and I have to say there are ideas that I never thought I'd really entertain that I now see that I want to do with Helen's support, which is things like I actually feel pretty much almost ready to start exploring a bit deeper around mum's last moments yeah. on this earth. I feel ready to perhaps speak to the policeman involved. I think my auntie Kate could help with that as well. Um, and I think that's something we could work on in, mm. in a sense. I, mm. I feel ready to understand more and shed some light on that last moment, mm. those last mm. moments of mum's life. And yeah, the big thing is next year in April, 
celebrating mum. So mm. there's that's kind of on my agenda. It's yeah. writing, transforming my work, and actually and making peace, making peace with mm. my mother's death, and stop letting it be the goddamn covering everything up about and, her and all of us. We've yeah. all got to be free from it, including mum. Mum is much more than her death. So. I you want, don't want it to, to define you. No, and I want mum's exactly spirit. what you said when you walked in the I door. Know. I'm not that girl, but... But I was still feeling a bit in the shadow of it, and I just want mum's spirit to be alive in my life. Mm. It's a real important mm. goal for me, and in the next generation, at my daughter and my and beautiful Isla. nieces. Yeah, yeah. And, and I have a nephew as well. I want my mum to be in their world. Yeah. Um, and just one thing, I did think of this on the way. I read it somewhere. It may be a bit corny, but I've always found it very meaningful for me. I learnt once that as a woman, you are born as a female with every egg you'll ever produce. So therefore, I figured out that when I was in mum's tummy, Emmy was also in me mm. because she was the oh, one egg that beautiful. would become Emmy. Mm. So Emmy was actually inside my mum. So I want that lineage to that's feel beautiful. connected. I want Emmy to feel connected to my mum. And the best way is through storytelling, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, beautiful. yeah, that's important to me. But yeah, it's going to be, there's going to be lots of fun stuff. So we'll stay engaged with you in our Facebook group. Follow along Helen's page um, to keep up with all her adventures. And I'll probably still post things in there because you know i won't be able to help myself <laughs> but uh yeah we'd love your feedback on a course don't you reckon yeah. it'd be great to hear yeah, yeah what yeah. people think and it wouldn't be too much homework would it no nah. just fun no it'd be fun it wouldn't be homework but it would be um so it, we would give them diagnoses like we get <laughs> so it'd be individual yeah so what oh, it would be is wow. that people would sign up yeah. so you would you would sign up to do the course and you would you would have maybe say eight modules that take you through. So there would be a little bit of homework, but it would be the same transformation that I've already had on this podcast is what they would get. So it, they might end up creating a writer's box, for example. They might end up creating the draft for a plan. I don't know. We've got to work out okay. exactly what we're doing, right. but it's going to be brilliant. Fabulous. And one day it'll be held in Italy um, and we'll all go to Italy. No. <laughs> Well, Maybe. that's very easy to arrange, I can tell you. Well, there you go. Put that on the agenda. But and Jonah's you. over there. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Jonah, I don't I'll get take Jonah. Yeah, go and get Jonah, I was going to say. You can say goodbye. Yes. Or just till Christmas. Yes. Oh, yes. Christmas. Well, Jonah's appearance last week was very memorable. Oh, did you hear him squeaking? No, it was more that he just sort of put his bum in the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Jonah. He loves being on the island. He don't does. It's yes. your favourite place. So, yes, yeah. thank you, Jonah, for being a really good receptionist on yes. our clinic. Yeah. Your check is in the mail, Jonah. Yeah, you've been very good. We're paying you and cat food. Yes, he's just really been our sort of observer and just making sure we're on track, haven't you? Yes. Made the odd appearance. Yes. Knocked not... over a mic. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he knock over something else? I can't remember. I may have weed on the floor. Pre oh, we wondered. So... I wondered about that, but <laughs> I'm not sure. I might have been yes. defaming him. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he'll sue you later. <laughs> oh, dear. All right. Well, I think that's it. So thank you so much for listening, everyone. We've appreciated it so much. We have. Yeah. It's been wonderful. And thank you, Helen, for your generous time and all the things you've given me in this process. Aww. It's really just been ace, and I've loved it. Well, I could so do it forever. So. Well, maybe we will. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we'll see you all yes. next time. Stay in touch. And here's to season one. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs>